Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Hotline League. It's a special episode because we have someone special returning to the cast who has been around for quite a lot, many years, but hasn't been on for quite some time. And that is my constant co-host, Mark Zimmerman. How's it going, Mark? <laughs> it's going great. I'm loving life. I'm living life. I'm vibing, you know? Yeah? Yep. Well, that makes one of us. All right. Uh, our guest this week is Kelby May. Kelby, our, it's so funny because every time you come on the show, like once a year, people yep. our, our chat is split between people who are like, oh my God, they've got Kelby on. And then other people are like, who's the guest? So for the yeah, that's the, completely fair. So for the second category, why don't you sum up your full esports history? Uh, I'll d- I'll definitely do the abridged version. I'm Kelby. Um, people who do know me most likely know me from my tenure at CLG. Uh, I used to work at that company and uh, back in 2012, 2014, and then after that. Um, I joined Alex and Colin and Brandon at Good Game that owned Evil Geniuses and Alliance. Uh, was hanging out there. We got acquired by Twitch. I was at Twitch for three and a half years, helping with esports sponsorships. And now I've been at Loaded for the past four and a half years, over four and a half years, the longest I've ever had any job. And um, I lead uh, talent partnerships there. So I work with Travis Gafford, who's on the Loaded roster, uh, a lot of other influencers you guys may know. And um, I help source their commercial partnerships with brands that want to work with them. And I also work with our esports talent on their esports contracts, like Doublelift and Busio, who are loaded clients as well. So, are there, yeah. what about, what about it? Is, are there any European hosts that you work with? Oh, Shocks. Yes. She's the, the best European host, of course. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm um, um, obviously. Uh, and since Peter returned to the LCS, the reason that I'm on this show again is because I've actually been attending all of the games in person because our office is like 15, like 10 minutes actually from the from the LCS arena. About so I go the, uh, to office. That's ah, fine. Um, and uh, yeah, I go I go to all the LCS matches in person to watch Alan and Peter play. Alan been fun. is Alan's Busio. Yeah. And you can call him that because you guys are good friends like that. We're Ooh, homies. old stale pasta. Uh, that's cool. That I, I had no idea that you were actually doing this until we. I got tricked into going to dinner with with Travis and some other people. You being one of them. Why mm-hmm. do you say tricked? Because the way that you got me there was by not telling me that you had something to talk about, but then not telling me what it was. Yeah. And making it feel like the only way I was going to learn was by going to dinner. And did you learn? I did learn. So that there was no and trick. I think, I think but I think I would have skipped dinner if I if you just if I knew what it was. Like if you're like going to mind wipe me and all I was going to remember was that I, I if I wanted to go to dinner or not after learning the information, I think I would have picked to stay home. You didn't have a good time with Kelby? That that feels great, Mark. Yeah. No, I had a great time. It's just Kelby wasn't there from the beginning. That's the only reason. He, I mean, he showed up pretty damn quick. Yeah. <laughs> and I learned Actually about all the great material a... that you cut from your... Uh, what's the name of the segment called again? Catching Up with Double Lift. Yes. God. The, you guys... I I don't know if Mark ever talks about it on the show, but you guys should get Mark to talk about the segments that get cut from from those shows. There, There's some really good material that's left on the cutting room floor, unfortunately. Um, my plan is to actually release it at some oh, nice. point through my nice. own channels because uh, yes. cause I don't care. Through yeah. your own channel or through our own are channel. You okay, are you okay with it? With a, this being on your channel with what you know is going to be in it? <laughs> I think I think we just wouldn't have it sponsored. Uh, we would we would not put the sponsors on it. Well, Loaded's making sure that's the case already. <laughs> Uh, By the way, shout out to Alienware for sponsoring this episode of Hotline League. We love Alienware (laughs) and any other brands that decide to work with us in the future. Um, All right. Let's talk about what there is to talk about. (laughs) 
Steve Wozniak. Wait, the chat. we didn't talk about content. Kelby and I are big content grind lords. We got to talk about the content we're watching. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, what's the co- content catch up? Hashtag content catch up. What are you guys? What are you guys watching lately? I watched uh, Scream Six. Not too bad. Uh, I rewatched uh, Rogue One. I watched Shadow and Bone. I am watching Bungo Stray Dogs. And I will shout out Bungo Stray Dogs because it's so fucking cool. Bungo Stray Dogs. Stray Dog. I've told I've talked about it before. It's an anime. And the the cool thing about it is the shonen, which just means like, you know, the ones where everyone has their powers and stuff. What makes it really cool is that all the characters and all their powers are based off real authors and usually their most famous works. And so anytime they introduce a new character who has a new power. You like learn about the history oh, of like yeah. this person and what they wrote. So like they just did a flashback story, and usually they do a good job tying them in. So they just did a flashback story. I won't spoil too much about like this woman in a war, and her power keeps people from dying. And she, the the name of the thing that she had wrote was a poem called "You Shall Not Die," and it was like written during like imperial era Japan when like soldiers were dying all the time, giving their lives up for like the emperor who was considered like divine. And she wrote like a pretty controversial piece about how like you probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> and like, you shouldn't kill yourself for this like stupid cause basically. And like, I don't know, just like learning the history of each person's power and stuff that they work into the show and like minor plot lines and stuff. is just like, it's such a dumb anime sometimes too, but it's also the smartest anime around. Well, fucking Fyodor D- Dolfsevsky's in there. They got fucking, uh, F Scott Fitzgerald, Herman Melville. Like they just, it's just like, they, they make, it's so cool. It's so cool. What have you been watching lately, Kelby? Uh, LCS. Uh, I also watch a lot of Pro Apex. Um, and then other than that, I haven't been watching a ton of new stuff, to be honest. Um, what about your uh, most I did recent watch, movie? Yeah, yeah, I did watch. I did watch the Demon Slayer uh, release that they had in advance of the season, and the stuff that they show from the new season, I thought was. So fucking sick. I watched the Attack on Titan. Are you happy that, that Brandon had. Fraser won an Oscar? Yes, I love the whale. The whale Great was movie. uh absolutely insane, emotionally devastating. I dude, I I cried, ugly fucking cried in the theater so hard at the at the end of that film. And like Aronofsky does like he does fade to white a lot of times at the end of his movie. So like it's really bright and it's like a very uncomfortable position because like everybody in the theater suddenly becomes very aware of everybody else in this emotional state um but yeah i was very happy that brennan won i was very happy that everything everywhere all at once won just um justice for chow hong i felt like she should have got uh supporting actress uh i i you know i she wasn't really a part of the conversation and i did think that either her or um stephanie yeah, Shoot, yeah, I think it yeah. Is. They they both they both did like really really excellent jobs. I'm not trying to say Jamie Lee Curtis didn't do a good job too, but yeah. Um, I thought I thought she was huge in that movie. Um, yeah, and then um, I watched Jujutsu Kaisen late but recently, and Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. There was so much hype around Jujutsu Kaisen, and honestly, for me, it just like really wasn't like <laughs> it was good, but it didn't live up to the hype. But Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, I thought was sick super sick yeah that's, jujutsu that's... kaisen is the interesting one to me where like i feel like it plays with a lot of tropes but also just like skips over a lot of them and it's like a best hits of a shonen weirdly it's like all right you know this guy he's basically kakashi anyways we're gonna make him fight now and you're like oh okay i guess he's just kakashi well i i know this will come as a surprise to many people but i've been playing a lot of magic the gathering lately and uh, yesterday it was really fun because I went. And yesterday played. I built a cube that had this card in it, and it was fun. Mark, you stay at home and watch anime all day, okay? You can, you're not allowed to mock me. Um, the the uh, no. Yesterday I went to Brian Kibler's house and I played Commander for his show. So I don't know when that episode will come out, or maybe episodes. I won't spoil. But it was uh, it was pretty fun, and I had a really good time with at least one deck. Um, but yeah, that's been cool. And I opened an oil slick attracts a grand unifier on stream the other day, which is pretty big. And yeah, we'll probably open some more after the show tonight. Anyway, let's talk about League of Legends esports. 
We so, should talk about in the comments. Leave a comment with who has the best out of League of Legends life. It sounds like who's who is whose life are you most interested in? Ka- Travis's uh, Magic the Gathering, Kelby anime, <laughs> me, cats. Yeah, it's definitely not me. Just for spoilers, um, I I would. There might that. be a lot of Magic p- game gamers though. I don't know. I people are all spamming stuff in the chat. No one's saying Travis. Although a bunch of people are getting timed out for saying Mark with the cat, which I find <laughs> fucking hilarious. All right. Uh, all right. So stuff to talk about. We a Blaze Olive retired today, announced his retirement. That is, uh, I think, worth chatting on. Uh, we also have the end of the regular season. Uh, Hanser came back to play for TSM. Uh, was not enough, unfortunately, as TSM did not make it out. Uh, we know now the six teams that are going through. We had a crazy tiebreaker day at the end. That day was, goddamn, that day was exhausting. Um, Mark, you—I mean, you were there the whole time too, and you were doing stuff from the start to the end, right? Didn't you cast at the end? Mark? Sorry, my, I, I got disconnected from Discord. That was quite pog. I just got back. What did you say? I was I was saying I was listing off all the crazy stuff, and I was including the fact that there was the crazy tiebreaker day, and you were there the whole time, oh. right? Yep. So there's a crazy tiebreaker day. The end of season was crazy. Uh, Double if finally realized spring split matters. Um, yes, as per his interview with me. Mm-hmm. That's indeed what I'm referencing. Um, yeah, we had our all pro voting and MVP voting and all that stuff. Ooh, when do we find out the results? All pro comes out this Wednesday, I believe. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I voted last night like an hour before the deadline. I wonder how many people didn't make it in time because they like had us re- submit during the weekend. Yeah, and normally there's I a lot be more shocked. time. Normally there's like a week, I feel like, or something. Yeah, I think normally it ends on. I actually don't know. Whatever. Yeah, I just feel like normally there's a lot more time. But anyway, uh, so we yeah we've got all pro MVP stuff. I feel like the MVP race got really crazy at the end, and so. Like the narratives going into that C9 FlyQuest game was pretty fascinating. Um, is there anything else that I am forgetting to bring up Twitch chat? Oh, also, so for a little bit more context setting, uh, Kelby has been around in esports for as long as Mark and I, maybe longer than Mark even. Longer than me, yeah. Yeah, and one of the things that is happening in esports is obviously there's a ton of esports teams that are going out of business and companies that are doing all these crazy layoffs. Twitch just announced today that they're laying off 400 people, uh, all this kind of crazy stuff. And because Kelby works on the sponsor side and business side of esports and streaming and all that stuff, if there are any of you out there that are interested in having a more business minded call or talk about the industry that way, I think we can definitely do that. So I feel like that's one of the calls or takes that we could take if Mark hasn't already pulled everybody. Um, pulling people now okay cool so by the way if you don't know how the show works you get on into the discord you can do exclamation mark discord in the chat to get a link it's actually just discord.gg slash travis we love to have people in the discord hanging out that would be super cool and then also if you can uh you could just type exclamation mark instructions in the chat actually Numi already did it and that explains how you get onto the show we don't explain it as often these days because i feel it's like most people know but that's the process by which you get on. Um, also, by the way, if you aren't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, because we just had a very slow month. Uh, both Mark and I were having a hard time releasing content for a variety of reasons, which just slowed down the channel a little bit, but that also has a bad effect on our subscriber growth. So if you aren't subscribed, you know, I don't tell you to spam too much about like, oh, go subscribe, but this is a, a really nice moment to do so if you are not subscribed to the YouTube channel. All right, oh yeah, turn notifications on. Uh, Though we do release a lot of videos, so don't do it if you don't want a bunch of notifications. Ding the bell! Is that a reference to your show? No, have you have you not been on YouTube in the last five years? Yeah, I know, but you guys also say that, at, or something similar on Catching Up With Doublelift. No, we do the old school, like, comment, subscribe, that's all we do. Oh, okay. We're do boomers. Do? All right, shall we get into callers? Oh, he's already off. 
Thank you to Chen Fasa, Yonstar, Cat17, Matei, Glimmer Glen, Prostar, uh, and Willen, Mint Gelato, and SNW Turtle. SNW Turtle, you just helped us hit 1,000 subscribers, so thank you. Tuft is here. Tuft, where are you calling from? I'm coming from beautiful Seattle, Washington. Hell yeah. From? Seattle, Washington. I was just up there this past weekend. Why didn't you come wow, and play and Magic with us, Tuft? Come visit. You didn't come visit? I, I, po I posted on social media that I was there. Oh. Did you I go even to mentioned it on the played? last Hotline League that I was broadcasting from Seattle. Oh, well, I, was, I didn't watch the last one. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Why? Uh, I don't know. I just had, you know, life stuff. I was busy. So life stuff that you couldn't listen to two hours of an audio podcast? Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, yeah, you, didn't, you didn't do any dishes, didn't take any poops, didn't drive <laughs> anywhere, didn't... No, actually, any of those. honestly, it's starting to become a bit of a problem. I, I'm planning on seeing a doctor <laughs> sometime soon. <laughs> what the fuck do you want to talk about, Tuft? Uh, well, of course, on brand for me, I really want to talk about CLG, uh, my boys. Uh, I think that Palafox should be a lock for at least third team all pro. Uh, but I also predict that uh, nobody on the team is going to make all pro because CLG was a little bit up and down at the start of the season, but also because they have just been consistently so underrated. Uh, even though they didn't go on like one big hot streak like a bunch of the other teams uh, in the LCS, I think that uh, so far they have just been like absolutely monstering on people in all their games except for like one or two games against like Dignitas. All right, so this is in, I, how much of this mark did you pull to talk about Palafox? Most of it. Okay, because that's what. I because I I thought this was interesting because I encountered the same thing you tweeted about last night. You tweeted that. <laughs> uh, you tweeted that. What was it? Oh, the, how just I how said difficult mid lane's it was? a shit show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and and do you I, want to explain a little bit so reason. that I'm not just reading your tweet? Yeah, I mean it's basically like every mid laner has something you can neg them on pretty hard to like if you wanted to make a case for them not to be in the all-pro voting at all, it's actually pretty easy. A lot of them have good cases to be in the all-pro voting as well, but, like, there's yeah. no slam dunk that's super easy. Um, Eminez is probably the easiest, but he missed half of a, the split, and he did have... They were 7-2 and two with him. They were 7-2 and two without him, um, and he absolutely ran it the final day, uh, which did not help his, like, case. Final um, day or final week? I feel like he, has, he was pretty iffy for a bit. Uh, the, the final day was by far the worst. Um, he was fine on Wednesday, Thursday. It was the double Jace games that were pretty, pretty sus. Um, but like, you know, every, everyone has something that you can kind of make fun of them for. So it was just very hard to, to do an all pro mid laner. Plus like, and I'm sure we'll talk about this separately, but the standings basically flipped on their head in the final mm -hmm. day with teams that looked like they weren't going to make playoffs before week eight, suddenly making playoffs and yeah. it just really wonky. Like for, for so much of the season, uh, it was like... CLG, 100 Thieves, TL, TSM, all of the outside looking in on playoffs. And so all the top four teams that we were talking about had all the guys who we were talking about, you know, being all pro mid laners like Gory was on the list, Vicla was on the list, you know, Jojo was on the list. But then Jojo got sick and started running it down. He also wasn't too hot at the start of the season. And Gory's team just kind of fell apart around him. And Bjergsen is a vegan, so it's like, what are we going to do with these guys? All right, so yeah. we can talk a little bit about the Palafox stuff as well, but I do want to also just reference the, your, you said that nobody's going to get it because CLG is so underrated. Mm -hmm. uh, so CLG finished fourth, two yes. games between behind 100 Thieves, four games behind FlyQuest, and five games behind Cloud9. And they had the same win loss as EG and only had one more win than Golden Guardians, who was in sixth place. So I yeah. ask you, what is your argument for the idea that CLG is underrated? So I think part of it is just that they did not really have a really dominant like stretch of games for most of the season. You know, they started off 2-0 and then they went 0-4 and lost to like Immortals, uh, I think. Uh, and then later on when they started picking things up, they went had like a s s portion where they were like 5-2, and two, where their only two losses were against FlyQuest. And they lost to like Dignitas, right? So like every time they started to pick up Steam, uh, they just had, like, one bad loss against, like, a team that was very clearly much worse than them, even if you just look at the standings and you don't even go, like, player by player or anything like that. And there's also just the fact that, like, so many, like, at the start of the season, just like last summer, everyone was 
putting CLG either right on the cusp of playoffs or already outside of playoffs at like seven, eight, right? Because the consensus was like, you know, they hadn't uh, improved at all. And like all these other teams made these big roster moves that would have, you know, catapulted them ahead of CLG. Um, and so I just think that all that, that was also one of the prevailing sentiments around the team just coming into the season. And since they didn't have like a really statement series of like six or seven games where they were really, really good, uh, there was never enough like to reverse that sort of initial momentum that was moving in the direction of CLG's okay, but they're like not really like a top team. They can't crack into, you know, being in like the top half of the playoffs or anything like that. Yeah. All right. I feel like uh, another potential problem for the CLG guys is I feel like um, player voting is probably like influenced by scrims. And I don't know if they've had like a great scrim success or if they're players that like other players feel impressed by, which is like weirdly important. Like you lane against Jojo or Vicla, you're probably like, oh yeah, they're really good. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if people have that perspective scrimming against like Palafox or Dokla or Contracts or whoever else you might make a case for. That's fair. Um, I guess the other thing is is just that like when you look at every other mid laner in the LCS, uh, I think that a lot of them are are not like one dimensional, but there's very clearly like a way that like one way that they're playing a lot and that they get most of their wins off. I think one thing that was really notable about Palafox is that he played a lot of the melees really well, but he also had a lot of really good games on like more control mage champions, oh. right? Like he was really good on Akali the one time he played it. And obviously the Yon Akali flex goes back to summer, right? But he also had like a really good Victor game. He had a bunch of Talia games. He was like the only person who was consistently playing Aurelian Soul. He was like the only NA mid laner who was really good on Jace every time we saw him on it, right? And like, I don't think that you can say that about any other mid laner that they play like so many things to like a pretty good degree. Um, the way that you can say it about Paul Fox. Kelby, yeah. what is your, as someone who doesn't have a vote, what are your yeah. top three mid laners this split? You said you watched all of 100 Thieves games, right? Yeah. Did you watch all the LCS or just Hundo Thundo? No, no, no. I was Hundo Thundo. Like, uh, the, so if you guys don't go to the LCS arena, um, like it's it's actually decently common that tickets will sell out on days, but the arena is never actually very full. I think that the tendency for a lot of viewership habits for fans is that they go for like the matches that they want to see for like a specific team or two, and um, or and or they, they show get... up later in the day because yeah, it's like it's hard to show up at two o'clock on a Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, but I will, I would. I was going to say I'm probably less edified on the depth around mid lane position, but in thinking about which CLG player would make the all pro team, I feel like Palafox has got to have probably, he's got to be, he's got to have maybe the best chance, right? I think that from, from what I've seen, like contracts and Dokla have also been pretty good, but I feel like they're just more contested in jungle and top for like all pro. 100%. Whereas like like you said, like um like yeah, mid has been way more open and honestly, like and I haven't watched a ton of MS stuff, but I don't know. The the he he also like has not yeah just been as impressive, especially especially mm-hmm. the last day. I, I definitely think it's true that Palafox has the best chance of of bullying his way into all pro. I would I would almost say that Dokla is probably second best just because I think there's a lot of drop-off after the top two top laners. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of, you know, like... the It's basically like Dokla versus Someday and Summit, uh, I think, yeah. for the third spot. And, like, I think they're close enough that, like, arguments can be made. I think it's yeah. harder in other positions. Yeah. And, and certainly in the 100 Thieves matches that I was watching, it felt like Dokla, especially the the last day, was having, was having the most impact. Like, I mm-hmm. felt like he was really scary on the map. I don't. I think we realized last year that they no longer tell us that we can't talk about our votes, right, Mark? Are we not supposed to? I I, I don't know. No, I thought I thought that we stopped getting that in the email. Uh, Let me read the email. Let me go find it. Yeah, I got it again. I will, I will look for don't it they too. publish the it. results for your votes? Yeah, but they don't want you usually like spoiling. Yeah, the no, format. it still doesn't say anything about it. So um, uh, let's see. So. I'll just say I did not vote for Palafox. Wow, that's fucked up. Who Mark, your... did you? Oh, oh yeah, you can't say. Yeah, I voted for Palafox. Oh, Thank you did? Thank you, Mark. 
Yeah, what the hell? I'm not an idiot. <laughs> oh, okay. Only an idiot wouldn't vote for Palafox. I so agree with you. Honestly, it's really brave of you to say that. I I think it's... that I where did it where did I I need to double check and see if I can find my uh, the votes. I think they mail it to you. Um, um it's an email. I'll, while Travis looks, I'll say this. Um, I was really, I did mid lane first, actually, in my head. You go in order of position, top, mid, uh, jungle, mid, blah, blah, blah. You go down the map uh, in, in the ballot. But I actually did mid first because it was such a, it was such a clusterfuck. It was so difficult. I couldn't make cases for anybody. And for me, I made my own metric about what I was going to value a little bit more this split to help me like differentiate for mid lane. And then I kind of applied that metric to everything that I was doing. And I, I valued consistency. I tried to value players who I felt like generally contributed to their team's wins, didn't need to like 1v9 a ton of games or have like insano pop-off games, but I also wasn't going to punish them or I wasn't going to reward them for like having those pop-off games. They are also sprinting it and like running down some of their games and stuff. So I definitely um, decided to like lean in that direction and then like use that for a lot of my decision-making about who I thought was like over the course of the entire split, some of the more consistent members. I think Palafox kind of fulfilled that role uh, because, like the caller said, he played a bunch of different champions, looked pretty good on them. There were games that they lost that I felt like he was actually playing well in, like the Dignitas game um, on the Aurelian Soul. So, like, I felt like Palafox was quite good. And then, you know, MNS for me just didn't get enough uh, games to, to realistically say. I always say that, like, you don't know how a player is going to play in the games that they miss, and you can't just assume that they that their whole split would have been, like, the second round robin. Because like yeah, he ran it in those two Jace games. Who knows? Like maybe half of it, half of the other games would have been like that. Because um, if you took Vikla's first half or you took Prince's first half and just stopped there, you would think they're the most insane player ever. But then the second half of the round robin happened. So yeah. like, I, I don't I don't really like rewarding players just because they had a good half of the split that they didn't have to play the entire thing. And so for me, um, nine games was just too little. I know we played ten with the with the. Uh, uh, tiebreaker, but it was it was just too little for me to consider Eminem. Though I think he would have been number one overall if he he put up that performance for eighteen games. Yeah, I couldn't find the the email with my my votes in it, so I can't I can't double check. But I'm trying to remember if I voted for Eminem because I think it was maybe a thing where I docked him a ton, but maybe I put him as third. I don't know. Anyway, uh, do we feel as though CLG? is underrated yes no, no not you caller yeah i know what you all. feel like because you you've <laughs> asserted this kelby and mark um i think they might be overrated i think they're appropriately rated i think that i think clg is like scary in a lot of people's minds and and appropriately so but i don't i think that obviously everybody is feeling like c9 is the big bad wolf um although like friday really scared me with the tiebreakers like some of those like the jace games and i know it's just like two games on jace but like those were huge liability games for me with mns um but i i i don't think that i think i think clg like i view clg as like a a top four top five team i put them in the same tier as like 100 100 thieves in EG right now in terms of like scariness and may and maybe FlyQuest. I don't know, but I feel like FlyQuest will resolve some stuff. You, you, I don't even think they're as good as 100 thieves. And people are going to get angry about well, that they, because they like got they 2 0 100 thieves during the regular season, but I feel like 100 thieves figured their shit out in a way that I don't, I'm not sure if CLG. I mean, obviously, CLG also had a good week, but I don't know. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't remember which game. Uh, it was in the tiebreaker, but I feel like CLG had a really good. I I feel like CLG had a really good match against a hundred thieves, and I really actually like their draft. Like I did, I did not. Well, like they players. lost a hundred thieves in the final game. Yeah, uh, but they they beat Cloud Nine on that last day, which is maybe what you saw. Yeah, they yeah. kind of turbo smurfed on Cloud Nine. Yeah. No, I know that 100 Thieves won their game. I'm just saying that like I felt very insecure throughout a lot of that game in a way that I didn't feel in a lot of their other matches. Gotcha. <clears throat> um, just to comment on some of the conversation in Twitch chat. People are pointing out the fact that when Core JJ uh, was out with visa issues, they um, he, he, we I gave him first team All Pro in that split. 
a couple things there. One, he did play more games, so it's not one to one. Half a season versus a little over half. I think that's splitting hairs, though. Um, I think it also depends on what else was going on in that split. I think uh, it was a uh, Vulcan got number two, but they were nine and nine, and then Hundred Thieves was uh, quite poor. Um, they were up and down quite a bit that split. And then C9 had Winsome, who was clearly not that great. And so it was a split where I didn't feel like there were a lot of other candidates. I feel like a lot of the candidates this split were okay for mid lane, um, which is one of the reasons I, I don't feel bad putting all spoiled gory in there. He played 16 games. Um, at some point, you just have to make an invisible line in your head, like where that number is. Because it's somewhere. It's, it's between not playing at all and playing the full split. Where that number is, is up to you. Majority of games make sense to me. Um, and the tiebreaker was one, like, I didn't... It's, it's, like, weird to consider tiebreakers to me because, like, some teams get tiebreakers and some don't. So if someone does well in a tiebreaker or does poor in a tiebreaker... Like, I don't count his second Jace game against him uh, for MNS if I was considering him or something. Or I It's don't, also... Like, I mean, it's funny because it's not even... MNS is... People forget MNS's first game in the league. His second game was yeah, great. his Victor game was not good. His first game was yeah. pretty rough, so... Why don't you consider uh, well, the tiebreaker mark? Because it's just like, so double it, for example, he got mm -hmm. 48 kills <laughs> this week because he played yeah, yeah. five games. And it's like, well, that's a little unfair to the other 80 carries who didn't get to play five fucking games. Um, <laughs> well, maybe they should have so like, fucking forced tiebreakers. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine to consider them for like a player of the week thing, but for the entire split, it's like weird to just like give someone two extra games to pad their stats out when you're looking at like raw totals. Uh, or like, Ooh, you could do like kills per game, though, right? Yeah, I mean, I would do that. I I didn't like pretend he didn't play games, yeah. but like for me, I just like the tiebreakers or like this bonus thing at the end of the split that you know that they, they don't really exist into my my uh, voting because then again, like if someone like Eminem ends his face off, but then let's say he hypothetically had a great game. Like, and for example, like Berserker, like ah, I don't know, what, what do you what do you do with that game, that Draven game? You know, he's fucking amazing. Is he going to win MVP because of it? Maybe. Should he not? I think he should. Maybe. If I, I don't want to give away my MVP voting, but you know, people always say I'm anti C9. Bro, look at my fucking ballot when it comes out, right? <laughs> Mark. There's like, there's a couple of narratives I push back on, and suddenly it's like, you hate C9. And I'm like, all right, well. Pfft. Why are you such all a right, hater? Well, <laughs> I, I think here's the thing. Uh, Fans are fans, which means yeah. they have an inherent bias towards a team. And I'm so whenever you say, well, this team shouldn't get it, and they think that they should, then their automatic reaction is to say, well, you're biased, which is funny because that their, their whole thing is that they're a fan. Anyway, Tough, thank you so much for the call. Anything you want to shout out? Uh, yeah, shout out Steve Wiseman. Uh, even though it goes against every fiber of my being to be associated with TSM, I am now a part of the TSMU mentorship program, and he is my mentor. Uh, he gave me some <laughs> sick job hunting tips, like spell stuff right on your resume and, uh, be a little bit of a stalker when you want a job. Um, and also, uh, it's a few weeks late, but shout out to Reed Duke for finally winning the fucking pro tour. It's been a long time coming. Uh, happy for my boy. Wait, why didn't you come and play magic with me at Mox Boarding House then? I didn't know you were there. I'm literally there like every other weekend. If you had been there on like a Sunday when we were playing modern, then I was literally there on the Sunday. Well, maybe not this Sunday, but like a few Sundays ago. <laughs> I was there on the 12th. Well, I guess that's my bad then. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. Bye-bye. Steve Weisey already gone, I think, from the chat. Unfortunately, I did not hear his shout out on the, on the stream. Shout out to Yoser for the sub. Apparently, I missed it last time, so I apologize. Uh... Gotcha J Kanoke for three years. Wow. And then Aobi. Thank you as well. Mark is back with the Dixie Cup. The Dixie Cup here to take his victory lap, I assume, after being a 100T fanboy and getting rewarded for that. Dixie Cup, where are you calling from? Uh, Los Angeles, California. And Travis is right. Um, for those that constantly listen to the show, I called in two weeks ago. I said 100 Thieves is going to finish the split 5-0. Twitch chat laughed at me. Lots of doubters. I'm here to say I'm the one laughing now. Well, you were uh, wrong. I was wrong. You know, I was a bit too conservative, and I'm, I'm sorry for that. Like, 
I should have I should have said seven zero. I should have known there would be the tiebreakers. Um, but my take um, on top of that is we're pushing it even farther. Rocket's not stopping. It's going to be a th- clean three zero this week against FlyQuest. Okay. And they're going to go to ten. So they're going to go to ten. They're going to guarantee a finals weekend once again um, for what now three four splits in a row, and it's going to be great. Um, uh, first off, something we have to address. Uh, did you see the um, picture butt guy about the the five uh, zero? He was the person on basically the other side who was so. So I saw people reacting to this, but I didn't see the initial Reddit comment. What was the deal? The initial Reddit comment was like, I think Closer did an interview saying that they're going to go five zero or something to close out the season, and uh, the person replied something like, "If this team goes five zero, I'll shove up individual members." Uh, pictures of individual members up my ass or something um and then they went 5-0 and everyone was like necroing that that comment and then the 100 thieves <laughs> twitter account tweeted out the comment as well as pictures of each of the members and asked for an address to send them to has the person commented since uh i haven't checked the account i i don't know yeah that's when you just delete that red account and start a new one doesn't matter yeah. how long you've had it <laughs> It's yep. just time to restart. Uh, your there, Reddit. There's no winning. It's a lose lose because if you don't do it, you're a coward. And if you do do it, no one wants to see that. And you're just like, it's disgusting and awful. Hey, so, Mark, there's probably yeah, somebody just, who wants to see it. The world is filled with a diverse amount of, pe- amount of people with different interests. And for somebody, they might have been very excited. They might have been, that might have been the reason they became a 100T fan that weekend. Uh, it's just <laughs> cheering them on. Anyway, uh, so Dixie Cup. How did you know? Uh, because Mark and I did not know. So please let us know how you knew better than us that the team was going to go undefeated. Yeah, reveal um, our secrets, Dixie Cup. Because I was <laughs> in the same boat as you, uh, clearly. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's easy. I mean, you see, even in the double lift interview after it all, he's gelling so well with Busio in the bot lane. You know, Nuke Duck came in, head, head coach. I think that has to do with it, too. I think they really... They're guys that when their back's against the wall, they don't give up. Like, you have the most winning player of all time in the LCS. You're telling me he's not going to make playoffs? Like, you're, it's crazy, you know? I mean, there's been so times they, in the past he didn't make playoffs. Agreed, agreed, but not this time, you know? He's back to prove himself, you know? He's back, you know? 100 Thieves, back on the map once again. We're going to be there, be in Raleigh. I'll be at the studio on Thursday. I'll have a sign. Oh, nice. Rio, baby. Let's go. But if Rockets don't stop halfway, shouldn't you predict them to win MSI at least? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got. I have to. I have to save that take for a few weeks. You know, steps steps at a time. He's you trying know? to pad here's, his ability to go on the show. He, here's what you <laughs> don't understand about MSI, Mark. Is like so. Rockets. You're absolutely right. They don't stop halfway. But we have only invented rockets that can travel within our galaxy. And North America winning MSI would be like traveling to a far, Uh, far away universe that we have not even discovered. So here's the problem. I don't think Uh, you guys are with the physics of it. (laughs) I don't, I think the rocket has stopped and here's why, because you mentioned you're going to watch them play on Thursday. When I go to lolesports.com slash schedule and sort by LCS, it says (laughs) no future scheduled matches for your selection. So I think we're done. There's a Reddit thread. Travis, is this your burner? Val- oh, no, I didn't even see that there's a Reddit thread yet. I, I will say that when, when Julie and I went to buy tickets for the Thursday match last night, there we, we were like one of six people that had bought tickets so far. So uh, <laughs> it's going to be you and, and me and Julie in the arena <laughs> cheering these guys on on Thursday, it sounds like. The whole crowd is in favor of 100 Thieves. <laughs> It, no, it, you honestly, know, it, like, I, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I I had to go to the LCS's Twitter and then look at the little tiny thing above each name and see. Okay, what day are they playing? Yeah, not and, to um, not to call me out too much, <laughs> but whenever I talked to John Needham at the end of or, or at Worlds last year, he was like, "Yeah, we suck at sports marketing." And I'm like, "Well, at least he knows. It would be great if they worked on it." But uh, apparently, he's at least he understands it and has accepted it. And perhaps they should do more. Did he say he was going to fix it, or did he just agree with you? I I think he said he was. They were going to work on it, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I got to go rewatch the wording. Then might be playing pulling a fast. Yeah, on he might, you. yeah, he might just be like, yeah, we suck at it. 
Yeah, you're not wrong. Anyways, accept it. (laughs) Uh, Kelby, do you think Doublelift has heard of the Challenger? Heard of the Challenger? Well, like rockets don't always. Okay, all all right, all right, all right. (laughs) Mark, (laughs) not not appropriate. I I I don't know how to how like what's the way to say it. The the better joke would have been like I've seen a lot of like SpaceX rockets like fail to take off yeah. or something. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's a better one. Yeah. I just went with the first neuron that fired in my brain. Again, um, we're trying to work with more brands, Mark, not less. Okay. Just clip this part out. And everyone in the Twitch chat, pretend it didn't happen. <sighs> Anyways, the point is that, that rocket science is really, really difficult. So, so what do we think about the match on Thursday, guys? Mark, what are, uh, what are your thoughts? On how I'm really is struggling. Go? I kind of mentioned it when I said like that CLG was overrated. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of wonder if that's true with 100 Thieves as well. They basically stuck Ooh. tenacity on Sion Gragas for the last seven games, and that's like all he plays. Um, yeah, but you're not I'm, using bands on top. You're just using bands on Peter and closer. Yeah, but, but Peter every... himself said in an interview, said, why are they doing that? Just ban tenacity's champs. Uh, in an interview or an interview with Travis Gafford? An interview. I'm not quite sure where. The point is, 100 Thieves found a way to win when it mattered. And that's mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. But I also watched this team for six other weeks this year. And it was not great. So I don't know what to believe in exactly. And that's how I feel about CLG. Like, are these guys really better than EG? Or did EG get COVID and, like, go play from home and, like, teams were able to beat them in this weird environment. And like, if EG was at full strength, they would still be the number three seed. You know, that's, I'm not well, sure. What do, you, what do you feel about FlyQuest's trajectory as well? Cause like a hundred thieves seems to be on the ascent and FlyQuest seems to be on the descent. Yeah. Their rocket kind of. is crashing. Do you think that that is like, <laughs> that is just a little sputtering or is it going to continue? Um, it's like in, uh, the Martian, when Spoilers. they need to use they need to use a, a gravity assisted slingshot to to get their momentum back up to okay. to, to make the, the trip. Um, For being on the yeah. analyst desk, I'm I'm hearing a lot of an like analysis that I would expect myself. Kelby, they don't do analysis that. anymore. Have you seen the analyst yep, desk? Kelby, they don't watching? talk about the what game. The Mark doesn't know how to do this anymore. anymore. The only thing he knows how to do is shit post on video. <laughs> So that's what he's doing right no. now. <laughs> so narrative points aside, I feel like FlyQuest is in an okay spot still. I think Speak okay. is really good. I think Prince is really good. And I think Impact's really good. Impact always slumps a little bit. I think that Tenacity playing this like weak side play style is like right in Impact's wheelhouse, and I'm really worried about him. I think Tenacity's been quite good in lane. Um, but I also feel like that's exactly what like Impact wants to do, is just both and be on the weak side. Um and like Prince, I would argue, has been better over the course of this split than Double Lift. The Double Lift obviously surged at the end. Um, and it makes me think that like, okay, if your weak side better and your top side's and your, your bot lane's better and those are your main win cons. And then like mid jungle, I think is, is the X factor for me because Vickle is pretty hit or miss and while speak is good, closer in playoffs is also insane. So like, I, I think it's FlyQuest favored. Um, but I think a lot of it depends on how much more of a look, like how many other looks does 100 Thieves actually have that they're good at playing? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that that's fair. I will say, when I called in two weeks ago, I said, tenacity, tank, weak side. That's all we got to do, you know? And then we play through the bot lane, let Peter scale. Um, and I think it's worked out for them. I will say, I think 100 Thieves just plays way easier to execute drafts than anyone in the LCS. I think, um, and shout out LS, I know that he did a video on this where coaches, do these drafts where they're like big dick drafts. Like we know what we're talking about in the meta, but they're harder to execute. And I think in LCS in North America, it's not, it's easier to punish those, you know? So not to give away any hundred thieves win cons, hopefully don't, don't come after me, nuke duck, but um... we are not going to give away the hundred thieves win cons. I, prom- I promise hey, did you. Did you guys know that closer is pretty good on Wukong and Viego and well, Viego is banned, way, Mark. Those well, are the only three Viego's champs he's disabled. played in this win streak. Just saying, it's the yeah, only champs he's played. 
We need the KO say, team to every, fix VA every, guy every, ASAP. Every What's champ, going on there? Every champ that they draft has some sort of CC on it. And you guys I know think... Busio's pretty good at Recon. He played Mark, four games of Recon in the win streak. Mark, did you pull <laughs> in He has colors? played only engaged since. He lost a lot of enchanters. This hang hang on. Clear, clear comms. Clear comms. <laughs> Mark, uh, did you... Did you pull anybody about the Viego stuff? Uh, no. I mean, I know he's supposed to be banned for the. I don't know if it's going to get fixed in time, but like, what's there to say other than? Viego's... Do you think that there's an? Do you think that that's a big problem for Hunter T? Closer seemed very no. dismayed. I mean, I, it's it's his best champ, so it sucks for them. But I don't think like closer 100 percent lives or dies on that champ. I, I have intel that Nade Shot has overnight shipped several cases of juvie to the dev team in order to get viego fixed in time for thursday it's happening uh did you is there anybody know why on the show he was played today in lec even though he's supposedly banned in lcs i do not couldn't tell you all right well sounds like something the lec would do just not be on top of the bugs different patch Oh, they're not nah, different. Probably not. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. Nah, probably not. All right, Dixie Cup, thank you so much for the call. We're going to take a quick break, but anything you want to shout out beforehand? Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys bringing me on. Let me have a little victory lap. Um, excited for playoffs. Um, love the love the show. Love what you guys do. Shout out Alienware, and um, see you guys on Thursday. Yeah, see you. Thank you so much for the call. Speaking of Alienware, it's time to talk about Alienware. Uh, Alienware, our wonderful sponsor and partner, uh, they make amazing products. So you got to go check out their stuff at alienware.com slash Travis. Uh, they've been releasing a bunch of cool things, announcing a bunch of cool things recently. And in fact, they uh, did just talk about some stuff during the Alienware update a couple of weeks ago, which you should go uh, go take a look at. All this stuff is on their social media if you want to give um, a good idea. And then also... I don't know if any of you were out in uh, Central Texas, but they did some stuff at the Alienware Mobile Gaming Lounge, uh, or they're doing stuff uh, now between now and April 27th uh, at, uh, all over the place. They've got that schedule up over on their Twitter, so I'll let you guys take a go, look, go take a look at it if you would like to. Uh, but yeah, some fantastic stuff, including a 500 uh, hertz refresh rate monitor coming up soon from Alienware. So please go check out their stuff. Alienware.com slash Travis. If you purchase through that link, it is very, very helpful. And uh, we really love Alienware for sponsoring the show. They've been a great partner for us. So thanks, Alienware. Mark, you want to go grab the next caller? Sure. Thank you to Escape Goat for 18 months, SLC Soy Boy, <laughs> Ricky Tiki Talk, and Big Angry Hobo for the subs. Is Ricky Tiki Talk the person I think it is? Is there just a bunch of loaded people here tonight because Kelby's on? I don't know. I guess we'll find out on the next episode. Hello. Of Hotline League. Papa Burgundy is here. Papa, where are you calling from? Uh, Georgia. Georgia. What do you want to talk about on the show? Narratives matter far too much in all pro voting. Oh, okay. How? All right. Go ahead and explain. I've there was an example that you. you you mentioned that I think was the big reason I pulled you to. Yeah, I mean, like, 100 Thieves this year will probably only have one person. CLG will probably only have one person. And that's because the preseason and the in-season, like, narrative has been pushing towards the people that the broadcast and the journalist and, you know, the overall sentiment has been pushing towards. And... When those people don't make it to the end, it doesn't fit the narrative, and it's still, you know, all pro voting will disregard that. So who's going to get snubbed as a result of the narrative? In my opinion, the biggest snubs will be contracts, Luger, and from 100 Thieves, it's... It's got to be Busio. Wait, Luger in place of – wait, what's your what's your all pro for ADC? I know, I know. When it comes to ADC, that's where it becomes the hardest, you know, because you do have Prince and you do have Berserker. And then literally the broadcast just made it their personal narrative this week 
you know, it became CLG versus double lift. Okay. And it became who's going to be the player of the week. It's got to be double lift. It could be any CLG player, but it's got to be double lift. And okay. it, wait, wait, let's just see. It's got to be double lift. Hopefully it's double lift. And then ultimately, you know, it became double lift. And so I think, you know, even, you know, Mark said on the broadcast, he said he was looking at the stats and he was looking at, uh, you know, who could be the MVP. And he said, you know, surprisingly, I think Luger popped up on a lot of these. And it jumped out to me because as a CLG fan, you know, personally, I got to be honest. Um, Shocker. <laughs> fair <laughs> enough. Um, it, it popped out to me because no one had ever considered any CLG member. Shocker. Summer, you know, 2022, no one ever considered any CLG member um, for an all pro moment. And then when they started winning, it kind of forced the broadcast to kind of say, hold on, hold on. No one picked him. No one picked them for the playoff picture except for Jat. And I think he did it ironically with the tiebreaker with TSM. Um, but ultimately, they were kind of forced into the, you know, top upper bracket region. And now broadcast is supposed to consider them for all pro. No. Palafox has been the reason why mid lane has been what it is this season. Name two better mid laners than Palafox, and I'll eat my shoe. No. Oh. You, you don't want to uh, make these can bets. I say, can I say MNS? Because then I can say MNS and Gory. Yeah, MNS? Oh, you mean the guy who broke the record for deaths in a day? <laughs> I, like, I mean, he was... literally ran out of Nexus as the Nexus was exploding to kill himself again because he's not a filthy KDA player. He doesn't give a fuck. I respect it. You mean the guy who beat MNS on the day that they were w looking to make the playoffs? I mean, I mean I'm thinking of the, I'm thinking of the team that lost way more games over the course of the regular season. Yeah, that guy. Uh, so, <laughs> Papa Burgundy, uh, yeah, some ahead. questions for you. Okay, so you said, oh, you know, this is all a construct of the preseason narratives and the like broadcast narratives, right? Yeah, go ahead. Do you think that so one, I guess that means that you think that like Cloud9 and FlyQuest were the most hyped going into the season? Uh yeah. Cuz I'm not even like I feel like people were pretty hype about 100 Thieves and Doublelift and Bergson coming back and like that was a big narrative going into the regular season. Yeah, I agree. But then you're also saying that like 100 Thieves is going to get screwed over because well well, I think it's also yeah. interesting that, that you think 100 Thieves is going to get screwed over and you think Busio is the one getting screwed over, but not Doublelift, who then you think shouldn't be on the All-Pro ballot, but Luger should be, even <laughs> though you also want Berserker and Prince. And FBI, when, since you, you thought Luger's stats were good, I highly encourage you to look at FBI's fucking stats. They're insane. Um, no, they are. And then, and then Stixa has also had, had a pretty good split. So, like... The narrative, I think it's really interesting to hear that they were kind of slept on until we forced them to consider them. I don't know how to tell you this, but that's what happens when you win versus when you lose games to Dignitas in week seven and, and you're on a big loss streak. When 100 Thieves loses, when 100 Thieves, excuse me, wins one game of their last eight, we tend to get a little pessimistic on people. <laughs> Well, so shocker, so, I know. Here's but, here's, but then when they win five in a row, we suddenly get more optimistic. Like it's almost like we watch what happens and then like kind of follow the narrative versus create it. I don't know if that tracks. Okay, like, so depending on what's happening in the day, we kind of talk about that. Well, and I'm banning anyone from saying shocker again during this call because you guys have now shocker. said three times. You get you get three. <laughs> um, secondly, I'd be interested to hear. I'd be interested to hear how many people put multiple evil geniuses on their ballot well the I good mean, news is you'll find out in like two days i think i know i will yeah and that's but i feel like evil geniuses because they had the momentum all season and because they had the narrative all season and because literally did the they week of yeah the week oh of i do final. not feel that way at all i don't feel like e i felt like eg was like Pretty, I, I, I feel like people don't really talk about EG that much. This Travis, season. are you shocked to hear him say that? Oh, find the person 
that didn't put them in the finals in the last week of the LCS. Every It was a joke. They literally laughed about it on cast. Every single person did. I just thought, I think during, throughout the regular season, and by the way, I think people beating EG in the finals has more to do with FlyQuest than it has to do with EG. But Fair two, enough. I think that throughout the regular season, for the most part, there was a lot of conversation around JoJo having a sophomore slump. Uh, the team just kind of like struggling to figure out. And like all the conversation was about C9, FlyQuest, Team Liquid, and 100 Thieves. I think those were the four biggest conversations throughout this year so far. And I don't, so I feel like EG, who were like the, the, the cool kids on the block last year, were largely irrelevant for the most part this year, um, at least so far. Well, and to, to go with what Shantona and chat said, a lot of the EG hype came from players, not us. Like, it was kind of like, well, they look like Donkey, but they are apparently slamming scrims, and they won spring last year from 9 and 9, and they've, they're, they, they're kind of trolling, but who knows, you know? I think but, uh, it's also worth noting that as bad as they were in the final week to go 0-3 and end up 5th, Heading into the final week, I need to double check this, but I'm almost positive they were still third place, which is when any of those graphics were made about people finishing in finals. I think we made all those on the before day before the weekend. The, yeah, before anyone else went on their run. So, like, I don't think it's that ridiculous to be like, oh, yeah, they should be better. And then they all had COVID and they're playing from home. Right. Uh, I, I would say as well that, like, Travis, Mark... And, and I assume most of the All-Pro voters approach the All-Pro awards as like a complete season award and try and not take into account recency bias too much, right? Yeah, I use the final week stuff as a bit of a tiebreaker, right? Like I think yeah. everybody was talking about yeah. Prancer, Berserker. I mean, we were talking about it on last week's Hotline League. And then I think my take was, well, I guess we'll see how things go this week. And yeah. like, so so that's like a bit of a thing, but I don't... Yeah, it's not a situation where I'm like, oh, you know, like who? I think a, a player could have a bad week and still make it onto All Pro. Yeah, and so like, caller, you mentioned you mentioned Busio. Like, I I think that by the end of the split, he was in the conversation for top three in the la the past couple weeks in particular. I feel like he really found a lot of confidence and was playing really well. Agreed. But I think it would be difficult. Honestly, and I'm biased in this conversation in favor of Busio. He represents him. It would make Kelby more money right now to lie and say that Busio <laughs> deserves all pro. And he's about to not say that. No, I'm just saying that as a body of work over the course of the entire season, it would probably be more difficult to feel like if he didn't get top three, I think I think it's hard for me to say that he definitively got snubbed. You know what I mean? Whereas like Peter I think, like, you know, you're talking about Luger being in that position over double lift. I think that, you know, in looking, it, especially for, like, double lift and comparing him and Luger in particular, for me, it's like there's an eye test beyond the stats. When you're looking at their contributions in the game and how they play out team fights and also, you have to remember as well, I think that 100 Thieves this last week showed us a lot of really interesting development in their macro with lane swaps, which is something that I would suspect that double lift is calling in game. Um, and that's not something that shows up in the stats, but had a really significant impact on their results uh, in, in the game and stuff. So I, you know, no, I I'm, think I, I'm pretty sure tenacity was like, Peter Malord, let me kill myself at tower level one and not get any <laughs> CS or experience and then go into Gwen as Scion. This is yeah. what I would like to do this game. I'm yeah. sure that was tenacity. Uh, yeah. Actually, so the, the last thing I'll say here is like, I actually would have taken your call or would have given it no, a little I, bit yeah, more merit. I'm memeing. I love this call. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah I, I would have call. given your your argument a little bit more merit if the argument had been narratives around, like there's a lot of recency bias in voting and mm -hmm. narratives in the final weekend have too big of an impact, not narratives preseason or during, because like, I did vote for double if for number three for ADC, and I bet you a lot of people did as well. And I don't know if they would have done that if the last week had hadn't gone the way that it did. And so there's a better argument 100%. to be made, I feel like, about recency bias than there is about like 
conversations from the preseason or even during the regular season and narratives from that being I yeah I'm with you 100% I don't think Doublelift was on anyone's ballot at the end of week seven I think FBI and 6A were ahead of him on most people's ballots with Prince and Berserker clearly number one and number three being fought over and Doublelift won that third spot in the final week um and so like yeah that's where I thought you were going with the narratives not that that the opposite is true that like people were sleeping on, you know, some of these teams all split and then we finally had our eyes open in the final week. And, and, and Papa Burgundy, the other thing is, I know you said it's like the preseason and mid season or, you know, regular season narratives, but like I have a hard time believing that if everybody had hyped at FlyQuest and C9 before the season and then during the season, and then they finished in fourth and fifth, that people would be like, well, the narratives, we got to fucking vote for FlyQuest and C9 players. They were so hype. Going. Like, there was, <laughs> if if there was as much hype as you say, then they end up first and second and like pretty close finishes. Like, I, it's hard for me in More that moment just to, be right. like, <laughs> to be like, well, okay, they don't. I will say, I will say the biggest example I have of this is Vikla. Vikla will receive all pro votes. And Vikla has been the reason that FlyQuest has lost more games than they have won. Like, Vikla, of all of Prince and Impact and Spica, has clearly been the weak link. And I still believe that because of the narrative that FlyQuest is the best team, Vikla, because, you know, even his teammates were saying, I, I did not vote Vikla's for Vikla. Vikla's the guy. You I know, he will get votes. <laughs> Well, um, I can't. There's neither, a lot of voters, so people, I can't promise that he won't get votes. But I just want to point out that Mark and I did not vote for. Vickla, neither so. of the people on the call agree that Vikla is going to get a vote, and the three people we talked about who are better than Vikla are all on my ballot. No, I mean, so. I think some. I think some people will vote for Vikla because pros tend to vote in really weird ways. Usually, what happens is people go like the votes come out. People get dissatisfied with the votes, and then they go, "Oh, those dang media and analysts." And then so one of us goes and looks at the chart and actually counts everything up and is like, actually, the pro players were the ones that decided that this well, person would go this way. So, I, like, I, I bet you Vikla ends up getting the votes, but it'll be because of pro players who don't – like, if, if he does get votes, I'm not even sure if he'll make top three. But I bet you that it's more going to be from pro players and shit like that than it is going to actually be from – the pe- like and pros don't care about narratives, arguably. So I I don't know. That's I. So I here's that's here's fun. my last thing, Travis. I promise I won't call back. Tell me who you put ahead of Cal- up ahead of Palafox, because I don't know who two better players are than Palafox. I need to. I I'll be I'll be completely honest. I need to figure out where the thing is that told me who I voted for because mid lane was tough. <laughs> I know I did not you remember. I did not vote for I know JoJo's on there because I remember oh. I think I put JoJo as number three. Um That's a narrative. That's a narrative. No, the narrative was that JoJo was fucking running it down and that he was having a sophomore slump. No one was and hyping JoJo during this year. Because he is the it mid laner. I that is not why I voted for like I pe- he was if this was last year, I would agree with you, but I feel like it's going to be controversial that I pit JoJo as a, a mid lane vote. He's probably my most controversial vote on the ballot. I I feel like some people probably voted Vic less. Some people probably voted JoJo because, like, especially for pros, like you feel it a lot more than you th- like. You know, Gore, uh, Gore was my number one. Or something. I'm trying to remember who my number yeah. two was. Gore was my number one. Pal Fox was my number two. But like, um. Yeah, I think like uh, people are going to put Vic and JoJo, and I'm not going to say that they're horribly wrong. I think in terms of like individual prowess, they probably exerted themselves the most over the course of the season, which I think a lot of people are going to index towards in individual awards, especially pros and stuff. And even some some analysts will will value the laning. JoJo was clearly the best laner the entire split. Um, whether or not you should value laning that highly is a different debate, or like how much his deaths in the mid game mattered. Um, right, like personally, it mattered. Yeah, well, I, I like, like I said, for me, I went heavily consistency focused this split. Uh, I just decided to try and measure everything with the same stick. And so, yeah, JoJo did failed that test for me. Bikla failed that test for me. I think um, I put MNS as my number two. I would also oh. say the final, the, the, the final count argument I would use for like uh, the spring season, the preseason uh, narratives is that I, I put C9 fifth in my power rankings. <laughs> They're first. And if I was going to stick with my narratives, 
I would have to probably not slam my all pro full of their fucking names. <laughs> and yet I feel like a lot of them are on my ballot in the one or two spot. Yeah. Thanks so much, Papa Burgundy for the call. Anything you want to shout out before we go on to the next caller? Yeah. Shout out to you guys. I listen to you guys all the time. Love listening to the show. Uh, Alienware uh, and all the sponsors. Um, just appreciate you guys having an avenue for us to call in and give our takes on uh, such a contested league, man. Love, love LCS. Love you guys. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. So I, much I love the call. passion you called in with, man. C- catching Travis, that little rat in his narrative voting. <laughs> God, if only. All right. Catch you later. Yep. Thank you. Kelby, you yeah. are narrative. You're narrative proof. You, no narrative penetrates you. What What is your uh, eighty carry list? Is it Berserker or Prince? And then is it Double Lift or who? Uh, it's it's Peter Third. Um, to be fair, uh, it's very difficult for me to. I I I I honestly am am not qualified to weigh in on that conversation because I haven't seen enough of FBI's games, right? And mm. So I'm, I'm, but I would put Peter third because of like, I don't know, they beat EG two O uh, in the in the in the final week, and Peter Peter looked really really well. Also, I think that P again like Peter's contribution to a hundred T success, I think is probably significantly higher in regards to shot calling, leadership development of the team than like FBI right. Uh, but yeah, Prince and Berserker have to be one and two, and I would put Rogers. Berserker one. Quite pog. Yeah, Berserker Prince double lift was mine. Yeah, which I felt really bad on the Prince stuff, but I don't know. Prince Prince was my my number one until the Draven game. All right. Uh, thank you to Big Angry Hobo and Penguin Buddy Fifteen. Penguin Buddy Fifteen, love the name. All right, Ismus is here. Ismus, where are you calling from? Hello, I'm calling from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Alan, is is it like A L A N? No, like Allen, like A L L E N, like that way. Not oh, like Bucio okay. Allen. I was gonna say yeah. Bucio could visit. Anyway, no, uh, not the same. What do you want to talk about on the show? Um, yeah, this was actually a question more directed to Kelby, um, but obviously, I'm sure you guys will have a lot to weigh in as well. Um, but basically, I just wanted to ask what he thinks about the what's the most sustainable way for. Like even the largest esports, like like CS:GO and League of Legends, to actually be profitable for the orgs and not just you know the game developer. Um, I kind of had thrown in there like, does it just need downsizing in his opinion, or, or is there kind of you know revenue or whatever out on the table with brand deals or what have you, or other ways that they should be going about it more strategically to make it work out and orgs are actually profitable and not just relying on burning VC dollars. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, it's a great question. Uh, the the consensus on this is certainly not out, and there's a lot of people struggling with it right now, so it's just one man's opinion, right? Um, obviously, prior to VC, all of our esports organizations, C9, TSM, CLG, when I was running it, were sustainable businesses. We had profitable businesses. Uh, from my perspective, and like when I was at Twitch, there was a very long period of time where I assumed I was going back to esports and was talking to a bunch of teams about doing so. But I think that VC ruined uh, the industry for me in a lot of ways. Whereas like when I was at CLG and we had the League of Legends team and I wanted to expand us into CSGO and I wanted to expand us into Halo, I had to think strategically about how we could generate more revenue to pick up these rosters and do so because otherwise, like, you know, the business runs out of money. VC is venture fail. capital, by the way, for those that don't know. Yeah. VC and, is sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, sorry. And then and then what happened is that a bunch of organizations got a lot of money. And in my opinion, the climate that they're in in terms of their profitability is their own fault. Um, there were there were no pressures and no reasons to inflate player salary markets other than if I am running a team and I think that I can get a better roster, how do I get the better roster? I go and I offer a player more money than the other person is doing. And I can do so because now I have this big war chest of, of capital that I've raised behind me, right? And they did so to unsustainable levels so that now these organizations 
are paying players significantly more money than the revenue that they generate. And as a product of that over time, in addition to compensating players more money than they brought in, they also asked less of talent in terms of sponsored deliverables, in terms of developing your brand, streaming requirements, all of those things. And so we have gotten to a place, and I say this as somebody who works on behalf of talent. It's not in my best financial interest to, to preach this narrative, right? But honestly, the way that people are compensated in this industry and how people staffed their companies also, like... 100 Thieves was like, and, and Team Liquid, like these are multi hundred employee companies right now. And their investment into infrastructure didn't increase their revenue proportionate to the cost that they brought on. And now we have been pushing towards this situation that we are seeing happen publicly across not just esports, but tech in general, where the macroeconomic situation in the United States in particular has caused a massive forcing function on these organizations where they've had to do layoffs. And in this off season, we saw LCS player salaries contract massively as a product of organizations realizing like, oh, my runway isn't as long as I thought. And at least if I was increasing revenues over time, I could justify and paint a narrative of growth to my investors and the larger market. And now we have FaZe Clan in a very, very public manner who presented a investor deck, which we saw and was like the most laughable thing I have ever seen in terms of like, oh, we're generating X millions of dollars per year. And it's just like a hockey stick up to where we're going to be like making $550 million in revenue at like the end of 2026. Like, I, I don't know how anybody bought this and how and how like they were able to have a SPAC and go to market at this IPO with this like evaluation behind them. And so now, anyways, because the economy is doing so poorly, brand dollars and marketing spends have contracted massively this year. Everybody is feeling the pain. So I think that, and I'll stop rambling on this because I could go forever, but this is going to be hopefully in my mind, a forcing, a forcing function where organizations are going to start to look at running their businesses more sustainably, pushing more aggressively towards profitability. And a couple of them are getting closer from what I've heard. And it's like, whenever I hear esports teams tell me like, oh, we're profitable or we're nearing profitability, um, it's just like, I, I, I don't really believe it super hard, but I think that you know these people just need to go back to looking to run sustainable businesses. They have the ability to do so, but they, they just were existing in an economic climate for a large enough time where they raised enough capital that they didn't have to. And they were just focused on growing their organization size and reach to the point to justify ever increasing valuations. Because you can always go raise another round because your valuation's higher. Kelby, you didn't um, answer the question. Sorry. Which is how do you how do how do they run a sustainable business? You talked about all the ways they didn't oh, yeah, run sustainable yeah, yeah. Here, businesses. Here, here, here you go, crazy crazy fucking thought. Um, your revenues have to be higher than your expenses, so you Damn, need to crazy. you need to compartmentalize your business and look at what parts of my business are leading, either directly generating or supporting revenue growth, right? And then for each of my team divisions. Can I tie back revenue to this game division or content division, merchandise, whatever, and have it be something that makes sense in our ecosystem and pushes towards company profitability? Or are my other divisions profitable enough that I'm willing to take an investment and put this game division on a certain period of time to push towards profitability? And right now, a lot of esports orgs are not doing that, but they but they need to. And and also, like I think that we've seen a, this year that a lot of people are very quickly reacting and pushing towards that. So, you know, player salaries have come down a lot in league, and they will across other game divisions. A lot of organizations have cut talent in other game divisions that are not providing sustainable ecosystems. And yeah, they, they will continue to do so hopefully until they are running sustainable businesses. And then I think that it's a much more interesting space to me. And I think that it honestly takes a lot more competency and acumen to run an esports team in that environment as opposed to everybody just 
trying to outspend the other person. You um, need to create value for your audience and your partners to lead to incremental revenue. Mark? So I disagree with Kelby fundamentally. I think the way to profitability is to stop talking to reporters, stop saying that there's a bubble or that you know we're not profitable, tell everyone we are, get Forbes to make us some more $100 million valuations of, of our leagues. Was that Forbes? Yeah, Forbes that is again? doing... Or, well, Morgan, oh, Stanley, Morgan did Stanley did the yeah. Overwatch Morgan League Stanley. one. But yeah, Forbes did the, good, the, the mega valuations of Stanley. all the teams. Let's get our buddies at the banks to raise the um, evaluations of our companies. Maybe SDB and, uh, just can get, do a report. Let's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll just we'll just get new investors. That's how you make money. You get you take other people's money. Listen, Kelby, as much as you just said, I've got something for you. Rockets don't stop halfway. All yes. right. <laughs> they just you just need to put some more bills in the engine into the the gas. The one uh, the one thing I'll I'll disagree with you on Kelby was that there was no pressure for them to increase salaries because I actually think that when you get rich people to give you money, they mm-hmm. want to they yes, they want like oh, we're doing this because we think the business is going to make a lot of money eventually, but they also want to tune into a sport that they barely understand anything about and see their team winning. And especially when you have a bunch of other rich people that they know who also own teams and you find out that, you know, oh, my friend who's rich beat my team who and I'm rich, then like you go to your your teams and you say, well, then why aren't we fucking winning? And they say, oh, well, you know, your friend gave us gave his team two million dollars more to spend on the roster. And then they go, oh, OK, well, I'll give you the money. Let's go get who's really good. You know, and then and then that's how you end up in in a lot of these situations because I do think that there is some investor pressure where they want to know why their team is losing. How many hours or even just games do you think these high level investors have watched of League of Legends of their te- own teams? I think they watch most games for the first four months that they own the team. Oh no, no! No, the overwhelming majority of investors are just like. Not, You're telling me the new flag whatsoever. Yeah. Oh no, no, no! Yeah, the, there's and there's like so there's definitely certain groups where individuals, but I'm talking about like if you look at the money that like Team Liquid and not to like call them out, but I'm like calling out the groups that have larger diversified capital that's coming into the com- companies: Honor Thieves, Team Liquid, C9, TSM, like. That's not individual, like, the Violas family is different than, like, you know, like a... a Axiomatic. A of, yes, exactly. A group of investors coming in that are making a... a, a Axiomatic on Team Liquid, for those that don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't mean... I mean the ones that are active are the ones that put pressure on the teams yeah. to perform. Because you're and, right and, that, like, whenever somebody comes in and buys a team and it's, like, 100 different people all putting in X number of people... That like that's not a hundred people that are watching, but the people who are like actively invested and are investing the most money and all that stuff, those people do tend to want to see results. And and Travis, I definitely agree with you and can empathize with that. However, I think that if that is your reaction to that pressure, like it's such an incredibly short sighted reaction because you have to think further down the line about is how does this behavior affect my business and the industry? Is this something that I can sustain where my answer to building the best competitive roster is just to win talent by paying them more? I, is, is that something that makes my business better over the long term? So so I, I get you. I Here's the, the thing is that people are so – human so i'm not making excuses for them Mm -hmm, but like mm -hmm. the problem is a lot of these people who got into the space and started teams did so because they were highly competitive people like say what you will about how much money steve has spent but like that dude wants to fucking win and so i think what ends up happening is you you have kind of the word and again i'm not trying to call it steve specifically but like for for the people who are talking to the investors. The investors are like, I want you to fucking win. And the team owner is like, 
I do too. That's the whole point. Let's just fucking win this thing. And it's like, well, I'll give you $2 million if you can win. He's like, fuck yeah, I could do that with $2 million. And so you just have like two people who you have two people who don't care about the money that they're spending, uh, but both, but care a lot about winning. And so you've created this like dynamic where they are like, it's, it's feeding like the worst impulses to ignore sort of the business realities of the situation. And so that's, I think, part of the psychological reason why you end up in this scenario where, like, salaries balloon because people are not making the logical decisions that you think that uh, that I agree with you that they should be able to make yeah. and instead are making the emotional ones, which is like, I want to fucking lift a trophy, boys. Right. And then when you make those decisions and you cause the economic damage to your organization that you do as a product of those over years of sustained behavior – and the calling card eventually comes. Those people, in my, my my opinion, don't deserve to be running those companies anymore. Like, sure. if if you have put yourself in this situation, and you weren't able to talk to your investment group and be like, "Hey, we can do this," but you need to promise me that you're fine with us just burning ten, fifteen, twenty million dollars a year. And we are going to be able to sustain this for a decade more because the revenues are not going to keep pace with how much you want to keep increasing our expenses. Then you have protection in that regard. And if somebody changes their mind, you can be like, hey, this isn't the deal we made and it's not on you. Yeah. But I suspect that that was not actually what transpired in most of these situations. All right. Mark is starting yeah, to fall I, asleep. So, oh, so no, I was just saying that I'm disappointed that um, – all the money's dried up, and I didn't sell my soul in time to collect a fatty paycheck from some dumb money. Um, and now I'm left here continuing to actually have to work hard for it. You've been I collecting really fatty it. paychecks for me, dumb money, for a couple of years. Not a, not a mill. I need – you're missing some zeros on, your, on my invoices. So I want everybody to know Mark makes – Seven figures for me annually. And uh, if he's attempting to say otherwise, that's slander. Uh, all right. Ismus, thank you so much for the call. Anything you want to shout out before we go on to the next caller? Yeah, absolutely. Um, last time I was on, I shouted out my girlfriend because she was excited for me to be on. Uh, I'm shouting her out again, but she couldn't stay up this late this time because she's sick. But she will watch the VOD. Um, shout out you guys. Love all your content, both of you, like Mark, on on the actual cast and as well as, you know, all the stuff you put on Travis's channel and Travis, all the stuff on your channel. Great, great content. Um, yeah, thank you guys. That's pretty much it. Yeah, very good. Thank you so much for the call. Catch you next time. Somebody pointed out that I have an Nine Inch Nails shirt on. Kelby has an MCR hat on. And Mark doesn't seem to have any music uh, attached to his body. So kind of disappointing actually i know what he's wearing he's wearing a red rising shirt which is a uh sci-fi fantasy novel all right shauna tonin is here shauna tonin where are you calling from hey i'm calling from buffalo new york buffalo new york what do you want to talk about on the show uh i just want to talk about how this is the best lcs season i mean hyperbole with the standing but ever in terms of the production that we've seen from, you know, the LCS side and even the teams and the stuff that you've been doing. The competition was great. Obviously, we had a banger ending. We had so many win streaks and then we had a lot of loss streaks on the other thing. You know, expectations be damned for a lot of these different teams. Uh, so it was, it was really, really awesome. And I think a lot of that obviously has to do with the way the production was done. Uh, a bunch of new casters and new faces and then, you know, the cutie Cinderella's and all the stuff. So, uh, yeah. 2014 was Kelby. Better. Kelby, as someone who has not watched the LCS for years, how do you feel like it compared to those years you didn't watch? Oh, he didn't watch it for a reason. He tuned in and thought it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, Mark, we have talked about this, though. I do think that a lot of the pre-produced assets that LCS has been doing that, that you guys have been a part of, especially like the chatting with Doublelift stuff, I I love that stuff. I think it's I think it's a great addition. The problem for me is that the LCS product itself, the watching the actual games and that experience has has not gotten better for me. Um 
I, and I, I can't exactly exactly like identify why that is, but the, the core product of LCS is still it's it still like is what it is. Would you I mean as a Dota simp, you like the like client being able to watch with that and like click around and do your own stuff? Is that what you feel like you're missing? No, that that's not it. Um for me, and this is like this is an extremely niche opinion, probably, especially amongst this audience. Um, League of Legends as a LCS in particular, as a spectator esport, um, is difficult for me at times because a lot of the a lot of the game is not overly interesting, especially early game. Um, there's not a ton of action that goes on, uh, and for me as well, a lot of the a lot of the way that a lot of team fights play out and the macro uh, on the map in the game is just like not overly interesting to me um, personally. Like it's 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 it's, 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 it's a very it's slow a very product. product. So okay, my question is, you only watch LCS the hundred thund hundo thundo, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you've watched I... other you you say that Kelly, but you've watched other games. You've talked about in in our our group chat about. Golden I do, Guardians but not like, like as that. much as like a, you know, like a, a hardcore fan, which is what I would imagine is the main demographic of the people who tune into like Hotline League, right? If you're tuning into Hotline League, you're probably a pretty serious LCS fan. Yeah, uh, and the only I mean, and I meant more so like other regions. Like you're not watching L LAC or LCK or LPL, right? Because no, like, and sorry to interrupt you. Like I always find I watch every Worlds because I do think that the gameplay at Worlds is a different like a much different product to watch in viewership experience. It's very, it's very good, I think. Oh yeah, for sure. And like, I, I guess I was just trying to answer your point about like the product that LCS is putting out there in terms of actual gameplay, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah, I, I can agree to an extent that especially, you know, we had a caller talking about narrative earlier. Like if I heard like Jat say something about a wind shrink unironically about Golden Guardians one more time, I was like, oh, or, you know, Lucian Nami, Zeri Lulu. Yes, it, it is it is over and done and played with and it's it it is kind of it get you get really frustrated with it, which makes some of like what happened last week so exciting. But I think it even, you know, plays more to my point is that given the state still of the play of LCS, while it may not be the most exciting, right? We're not LPL, we're not VCS or something where there's just fights all the time. You know, the the segments with Mark and uh, the rest of the team are just absolutely fantastic because I think it keeps the viewer interested, right? Like, it keeps them to want more. Like, I know people will look at LEC and think that their product has always been really good, but they're doing that more kind of corporate esports side with, like, the desk and the lounge and everything and the way the LCS has expanded, I think, to try to garner new viewers, I think is something I has been really refreshing. All the co-streamers have been very, very positive uh, as well. So I, th I think that's it's really been positive for that. So yeah. I, I will say, I was talking to somebody about this yesterday, and I think one thing that has been very impressive to me or that I think they have done a very good job with is in the past... The you used to like tune into the games, right? So, so if I'm at home, I'm not at the studio. I think it was very easy for me to have the games on, to be watching them, and then like the game ends, and I get up. I'm gonna go. I don't know, do some laundry, or I'm gonna go do uh, makes food, or I don't know, any number of different things. And it was very easy to just be like, oh, I'll have this on in the background while I'm doing something else, and I'll come back later consistently, I think the new way that they've approached the broadcast makes it harder to do that because you get up and then something crazy starts happening on the screen and you, you're like, oh, wait, what is this? I want to go back and see what this, like, catching up with double lift thing is. Like, what the fuck are they doing on screen right now? Or what is this? Even if it's something I don't like, like, for instance, I was not a huge fan of the, um, what, the poetry, slam poetry thing. Um, uh, boo. I yeah I was that was not that was not content for me. I can yeah. understand how maybe it was for other people, but I I 
I was like drawn back to see what the heck was happening. And so I think that that novelty of the content, like the content's very novel, it's very unique. There's a lot of, it's very dynamic. You never know what you're gonna get after every game. That I think does so much to keep people engaged in a way that like, back at the desk, okay, let's talk about the games. Yeah, this player, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. and I know there's been a lot of criticism too of like, they're not talking about the games as much. Um, and and I can understand why for some people that's very frustrating, but like they just spent so much time talking about the game and then the game ends and then the casters like vamp for a little bit and then they do an interview where they talk about the game. And so like I I like yeah, it's kinda nice whenever there's at least a couple minutes of it, but like I don't need another what was it used to be, Mark? How much how long were those analyst test segments segments, not counting commercials and all that? I mean, they're technically the same time as now. It's 15 minutes aimed for the 200 time total. 15, well, I just 17, mean, depending on. I just mean, but you guys were not talking for 17 minutes. Well, no, but I'm saying like uh, the total turnaround time is basically the same as before. Yeah, so like, I'm just saying. For example, well, like I, I know what you're saying. I'm trying to tell you that it's hard to calculate how long we talked before because it would depend on the interview, depend on the casters, how long it took to get to us. Um, if there are any things like built into the bump, you know, like if there's an ad for something, we don't speak or whatever. So sure. um, before it would be anywhere from five to seven minutes of us talking, maybe. And that's still true. Like when we do a, a VOD review with a pro player, it's, you know, seven minutes usually. And so so that's what I mean. It's like I don't think I need what is cumulatively uh, doing math, doing math, like 30, what, 36, uh, 35 um minutes of of them talking about the game over the course of the the broadcast right but if you if you put some stuff in there you know where there's something unique happening i think that that is it's just way better at keeping people's like very short attention spans in 2023 like hooked onto the screen and engaged and they're less likely to click away or just get bored yeah i also yeah i think it just it also helps with like you know uh, in the previous call Gubby was talking about like players building narratives and like their own brand and stuff like that. And I think while the onus I do still think is upon the individual like orgs themselves and the players themselves, the LCS is doing such a huge service to some of these players who don't stream or don't do all this stuff where like the, the thing that dropped today with Mark and the TSM guys was I laughed so hard at work while watching that thing that I had to like, it, it was, it was fantastic. And then like when we do, like having speaker come on and talk about stuff. I don't need the ESPN model of 24 hours of talking about the same thing over and over to try to build hype or something like that. That's not like in esports, we have the luxury of having a space that's more accessible and open to these players. And I think the LCS is really trying to take as much of advantage as they possibly can with it alongside all the great content that people like you, Travis, have been putting out with like, you know, the questions and everything like that. It gives us a more personable side to it which i think makes lcs more attractive to where maybe some of the stuff like kelby's talking about where the games may not be at the highest quality uh you're still there for the teams and for the players and i think that that's why lcs looks great and then we had really great run streaks with the golden guardians thing we had great narratives that were being built that mattered because they were prevalent and irrelevant because we got to talk to the same people and not just be like well you know, they uh, they won this game, and uh, wow, did they win this game? Yeah, they sure did. How did they win this game? Yeah, they won this game. So yeah, the the, the game the games were and the streaks and all that stuff was it was very dynamic as well. It was not just like one team dominating and everyone sucking. It's you had a lot of different moments where certain teams made pretty good runs. Mark, you've been silent on all this. Do you want to wrap us on that conversation from your perspective? Uh, no, I think we're the best broadcast ever. And, uh, <laughs> no, but I mean, are you proud and happy with only our like you, yeah. you have done so much differently than any. This has got to be the most unique split from a content perspective, and your role in all this has been pretty dramatic. Given you know not just the thing you really say, but catching up with Double Lift and a lot of different stuff. As yeah, I think uh, I've I've been very happy with the changes to to the broadcast schedule or like the the format of the content. I think it lends itself very well to like my strengths in the first place of basically being a content producer, having done that with offline TV. Um, I do miss someone just like talking about the game. I know Sean might not find that that interesting, but I still enjoy it. And so oh, I'm, no, I'm missing I it a little. I still love it, by the way. It's just, yeah. it's nice and refreshing. 
yeah, so I miss it. We'll see how playoffs goes. We obviously are going to keep some of what we've been doing, but also to focus in a little bit more on the game, obviously in a series. So we'll see how that feels to people. Um, but that said, I, I'm enjoying making content a lot more this split. And my favorite piece that I've made is actually it's nasty one. I, I would love to have players who have their own identity a little bit and then find content that matches their identity Do you want to tell people um, which one this is just because you're not in it i don't think so they don't know no it's it's the one where we asked tenacity what's in his bag and the opening thing is me asking <laughs> yeah. him if he identifies as a fuck boy or e-boy and then he says no he's a golden retriever and then it goes into like a very much a gq style like what's in the bag kind of thing um and while i don't think it was the most popular thing we've done i think it was very good in the sense that like it attached you to tenacity hopefully if if you appreciate who that what kind of person he is and i think sometimes the content um shows like a player's like kind of funny but you don't really get to know them entirely so i would love to make more content that i if, if i just knew what people liked i, I feel like I, I watch enough content to be like you should be in this kind of thing and i can try and match people yeah yeah thanks so much sean and Tana, for the call we'll catch you next time anything you want to shout out um Shout out Alienware and Grubhub as always. Uh, shout out all y'all. Huge shout out to Kelby. I got super fucking hype when I heard he was going to be on. So that's awesome. Uh, always shout out to Rad uh, as well. Uh, Rise Above Disorder. And yeah. Uh, take care, guys. Yeah. Thanks, man. When I heard Kelby was going to be on, I just said, who make a lol? Thanks so much, uh, Sean. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, shout out to Jad as well for helping out the, the tenacity one. We tag team that shit, so I don't want to make it sound like I came up with that whole thing my whole myself. But I think that's that's one of the biggest successes. Anyways, moving on. Mark trying to get all the attention for himself. Thank you to St. Louis Slayer twenty four for fifty seven months, and Corey Lulu for sixty four months. Wow, oh, Molly. we did it, Corey Lulu. We did it. All right, Mark should be back in just a second. We've been we broke a thousand subscribers earlier, and now we're down to nine hundred seventy six. Uh, I must have streamed like a month ago, and then gotten a bunch of. It's not barstool. I never fucking watch Sunday conversation. It just goes to the show the fact that any show that you think I'm copying just has been copied from something else. Fucking that Sunday conversation is just a rip off of Between Two Ferns. It's been around much longer. All right. And all that's just a rip off of the fucking Ali G show. All right. What are you just talking with- Mark? What is where did this come from? <laughs> chat. Chat this is why you can't read chat during the show. Yeah, Mark always also, does this where a- he screams no, no, no. at Twitch chat out of no, nowhere no, 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 no. it sounds like we no, did no, an no. edit. No, no, no. No, no, no. All right. It's it's also because every single catching up with double if that comes out, so people are in there like, Oh yeah, just copy Sunday conversation some more. And I'm like, bro, I didn't even know that thing existed until I started making the show and people said I was copying it. I'm copying the Eric Andre show wholesale. Yeah, I was gonna say, off. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I'm copying. But it's also worth noting that there's a long tradition of interviewers fucking with interviewees and no one invented it. All right. Chicken shop dates a model modern version, hot ones is a modern version, Z Way's thing is a modern version. Like it's just been the around. The Jiminy forever. Glick right. show is oh, literally that's a reference right there literally what is it, timony, you, you definitely timony need to explain that to your audience uh, travis yeah. Holy moly. glick what jiminy glick yes oh jiminy yeah it's well, it sounds old-timey as fuck the name jiminy <laughs> itself is wow i haven't thought about that in forever dude that's it's, a uh, you should go for, uh, a lot of that stuff holds up martin short is a god um yeah. but yeah that is literally i thought for, at one point in time i went on a kick where i was doing i was watching a bunch of jiminy glick like clips and stuff online and i was like man it would be so fun to like do this to create a character and just fuck with people and mark's kind of doing that now but like the jiminy glick stuff was was great because he just became that character yeah <sighs> one, one of the things i didn't give enough credit to actually but thinking about it when the last caller was and he was talking through his stuff and you guys have kind of mentioned a little bit but all of the things this year that you guys have done to add personality to the broadcast, I just love those pre-produced segments, but also the pe- bringing people on the cast and having like having Courage on, having mm. Cutie on, and also bringing players on and having them do the post-game interviews. I would also love to see also from like the mainstay talent on broadcast, if there was a little bit more personality. I feel like most of the casters just talk about the game 
the entire time and they don't they don't have enough opportunity to let their personality really come through the way that we saw I'm going to sound like such a boomer with tasteless and artosis that made them great with Doe and Monty that made them great and like it's 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 probably a taste preference thing too but like I would just love to see some more of that on the LCS broadcast as well uh, all right, so we have our caller here. Trespasser is here. Trespasser, where are you calling from? Hello, I'm calling from Downey, California. Downey, California. Uh, what do you want to talk about on the show? Okay, so my take was that in a few short years that Blabber will be the definitive any goat of... I mean, yeah, the, the definitive any goat. Take, overtaking Doublelift and Bjergsen. Wow, you, you, really, you really threw in a crazy one for the last one, huh, Mark? This is not I just the last had one. to. There's two more. It, it, there's okay. one more, but one more. This is, yeah. <laughs> I just had to get it in for you. All uh, right. All right. So you said in in how many years? Two years? In a few years, like okay, like two or three years. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Already uh, is. I, I mean, um, I don't think this is like. Wait, I want to hear the reasoning for why. I mean, the reasoning for why is, um, I mean, the past. Blabber has obviously done better internationally than Doublelift has and Bjergsen. And, um, and while Doublelift was getting his championships, Blabber was always coming in second. So I don't think he was that far behind him. And um, yeah, Bjergsen, I don't know much about, to be honest. So yeah. I mean, would gonna... anyone contest oh, wait, what that changes? he's... Would anyone contest that he's number three? Uh, I guess some people would probably throw out Smithy as a potential um, one behind him right now. Or maybe ahead of him. Uh, I, I think it depends on, on your perspective. Impact? I guess Impact's an interesting case because he is kind of grandfathered in. And even if you lopped off his whole SKT career, um, he still won a ton of titles and has made MSI finals and gotten out of groups and stuff before. So, like, uh, he would probably overtake um, Blabber as well, maybe. All right. So, so what does Blabber need to do to be considered the NA GOAT? Mark, Travis? You tell me, Kelby. You're, you're the, the lover of, of Doublelift. What, could, I, can, can he even be dethroned? Well, I'm I'm obviously the, I'm obviously the most biased person in this party, but also you guys have been paying attention for more of Blabber's career, and so you're more edified on the topic. So, How, when, so when what did would Blabber to enter LCS? It wasn't even that long uh, ago, right? No, it was pretty long ago. I think he started splitting time with Spence Garen in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, and became the de facto starter in 2020. Yeah, but you see, like. From the perspective, like from, yes, I agree that that was a while ago, but also like from the perspective of a double lift or a Bjergsen or an ex-Smithy, that is not that long, right? Like he's no. not even halfway through the career that most of those guys had. So I think, I mean, the unfortunate thing for him is that Bjergsen and Impact and double lift are all currently playing. Uh, but I do think... You know, if those guys really start to fall off and Blabber has two or three really good years. I mean, like, you look at the what's that stat that people are putting out right now, which is that Peter hasn't lost a, like, playoffs he's made it into since, like, 2016, I think, um, or some some ridiculous number. So I, I think that that is the level that you need somebody like Blabber to get to in order to be able to, like, contest that throne does he have yeah. to win a certain number of splits mvp I, I don't think that you i don't think you like make it a hard guideline because okay. then you know if, like if if he gets second every single time but is getting mvp for like six splits in a row or something like that you know like there's there's you know you don't want to you want to create like the whole point i think is to have it kind of be a loose guideline and to obviously foster the conversation but you can look at the achievements that Peter has had, the achievements that Bjerg has had, and say, is he anywhere close to these achievements yet? And I don't think he's there yet. Now, to the caller's point, mm -hmm. I mean, if he goes on a tear over the next three years, then yeah, I think he could get there, right? Like if, if Cloud9 just starts winning a bunch of these splits, they win this split, they win next split, they win the next two, Doublelift and Bjergsen retire, and like 
they're well, you know obviously they look good at the end of the split, but if they never really get back up to there, like I don't think it's too hard to say that he could he could do this, especially if he picks up some MV, more MVP trophies along the way, or at least to contest. Uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty hot on Blabber. I think uh, he has basically had the as good of a resume as anyone who started in the league. He immediately picked up a couple MVPs. He's won a title every year that he's been in the league so far as a starter. Um, C9 also has won a title or made a finals every year. I forget what it is. But he won in 2020, in 2021 spring, and then won in 2022 summer. He's won a title three times. He's won two MVPs. I would say that personally, he has had the most dominant split of any single person since he's come in the league. His 2020 spring is just inhuman. Um, And he's been so consistent. Yeah, he's always been good. He's never had a bad split. Even this split where I'm like, kind of cooler on him than i think some of my peers even then i'm like he's only number two guys <laughs> you know it's like kind of troll that that's like the lowest i can put him uh i think um what he's lacking right now is the amount of time the other guys have had but i don't think bjerg or doublelift have been anywhere near their peaks for i mean obviously doublelift was retired so it's not really fair but like that stat that people are t- referencing is like a little fraudulent because doublelift got ninth in 2020 <laughs> spring <laughs> um you yeah, because he decided like, spring split didn't matter. You can't count that one because yeah. he didn't try. Springs, he learned his lessons. Spring split matters now. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's it's fair to say that Doublelift is someone who is very, you know, his motivation goes up and down. So like, it's not like that's an indictment of his entire uh, skill level. But um, it also is true that when he won in summer 2020, Doublelift was not like the de facto, hands down, easy best 80 carry. He's still very good, but like, uh, I don't think he's been like the dominant player that he was in 2018, 2019 times when peter was winning everything so like yeah in that sense i think like he's hotter like blabber is hotter right now than the other two goats and so he is gaining on them even though they're still in the league i think to kelby's question i would love to see him continue you know picking up these trophies and little clips mvps awards and i think the one thing he's missing is like a big international performance to hang his hat on because peter has that peter has a 2019 msi um as well as just like an insane number of titles you don't yeah. think being FPX was like a major achievement and EU rogue? Being FPX? Yeah, to qualify for Worlds for the group stage. I, I don't think best of, I'm not mistaken, right? It's best, there's a best of one, right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm memeing. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I, I thought you were being serious. I was like, oh, yeah. I, like brain farting, like. I don't think Blabber's really done anything internationally yet. I mean, like, he's good. I, I think he is really good. And I think, you know, Dom had a tweet about how, how good Blabber could be if he was an LPL or whatever. But, like, I know Blabber has had some big failures on the international stage. I, have, I think it soured him in some people's minds. It hasn't done it for me. But I, I do want him to get that big, clear dub where they, they get out of groups and they win a best of five. I don't think he has a best of five international win yet. Um, I mean, Bjergsen, if, depending on what you count IEM as, you know, um, but yeah, I think yeah. that's, that's something that, that Peter has is, um, some good, good series. I th- I think the thing for me too, that has always really impressed me about Peter and also like, is one of those things in like the LeBron conversation that, that weighs in for him is that like Peter did it with three different organizations where like, no matter where Peter went. LCS has run through him. You know what I mean? Obviously, Blabber is gaining now, um, but that's something that will just always be difficult in the conversation and probably speaks to somebody's ability to really impact the league in a significant way is when you can go to three different systems and organizations and make them the best team in the league. Not just that, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it didn't... uh... CLG is the only team that Peter ever left and then was able to pick up another win without him, right? And that was just the first split yeah. afterwards. Uh, team Liquid's yeah. been cursed since. TSM didn't win anything until Peter came back, and they're certainly not going to win anything anytime soon. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think I think that is a really good point, Kelby. Yeah. It's I, a good I, narrative I, point. Yeah, sorry. I do think, though, that if... The, the thing that is sitting out there for all of these players is international performance. I just worry that for NA, um, we are getting further and further from that ever being something that we can achieve as opposed to closer. So, 
Thanks so much. I uh, think that'll make it all the sweeter when Blabber wins worlds. True. Trespasser, thanks so much for the call. Anything you want to shout out before we go into our last call tonight? Uh, shout out Alienware, Travis Gafford, and uh, Video Game High School, if you guys ever watched that. So, yeah. Very good. Hell yeah. Jamie Wong, baby. I don't watch Video Game High School, but I do watch The Command Zone and Game Nights, which is produced. Anyway, all right. Thanks so much for the call. We'll catch you next time. Peace. All right. Uh, let's see. Where are we? Thank you to... Oh, a uh, scam train started. Thank you, High Ground, Scaff. Bloods Point, Jordan, uh, Basket O' Knives, Plutonic Poltergeist, and Muzzled Republic. Uh, Brenzi Hello. is here, the last caller of the night. Brenzi, where are you calling from? Uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Kalamazoo, Michigan. What do you want to talk about on the show? Um, my take is that um, Team Liquid, if they stay together, they could definitely have a chance at winning summer. Um, All right, this will be a like, quick one. Yeah. I mean, also, I'll preface that I am a 100 Thieves fan. I'm totally on the rocket, so um, they're probably going to win summer. But, um, yeah, I think, like, CLG staying together this year, they improved a lot. Um, when 100 Thieves stayed together for, like, three splits in a row, they placed top two every split. Um, C9 mostly stayed together, and they're doing really well. Um, and also, like, if you told me at the end of Worlds last year that, like, an NA team was going to have Summit, PO6, and Core JJ on a team, like, you could fill in the other two roles, and I'd be like, oh, they're probably going to win. But it just, obviously, it didn't happen this split. But, yeah. And I also think, like, a lot of the AD carries in the league were praising uh, Jan at the, like, start of the split, at least. And had, like, a lot of hope for him. All right. So, you're, I like that you're, in, the, in the very first, like, 30 seconds, you're like, yeah, they're going to probably win unless it's Hunter T who wins. Like, they're just, we're just throwing FlyQuest and Cloud9 out the window. For summer, yeah. apparently. Brenzai. I mean, the uh, rocket just doesn't stop. You know? all right. like, <laughs> well, the rocket that, has been stopping for time. Team Liquid for a bit. Uh, that shit's been sputtering. I, do you, you really yeah. think they'll keep... Do you, Okay, first off, do you think they keep all five players between spring and summer? I think they might give up Harry or Young. Um, oh, no. But I don't I think, think so. Like, Honestly, I think it's PO6 or Summit that they give up beforehand. I mean, I am actually a huge Piosic kind of a doubter. Like, DRX obviously broke up for a reason. Maybe they, like, realized, like, oh, P.S., like, we just, we got lucky with Wait, them. Wait, you're a like, doubter, players. but you think that they're going to win Summer? I think if they all stick together and can, like, work through their troubles and actually like, grow as a team, then I think they Dude, would Dude, this is, this is such on one of those sakes. Man, you're just throwing <laughs> topics out there, and, I, and you caught me. All right? You're fucking, you went fishing. You reeled me in, and now you're like, by the way, 100 Thieves is better, and Pioshik sucks ass, but yeah, yeah, sure, why not? Team Liquid's going to win summer. No, I mean, I really do think they could win if they stuck together and actually worked Babe, out. Babe, I finally did it. I got a Hotline League. Mark <laughs> fell for it. <laughs> um, oh, fuck, he got me. They uh, could. Oh, the caller fish me, yeah. Oh, Bred Bredze, um, okay. You you mentioned CLG improved a lot. Like they stuck together and they improved a lot. Mark, where did yeah. they finish in summer last year? Fifth. Where did they finish in spring this year? Fourth. They got a lot better. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I, Brad, say like I just don't get it. Where, wh how, where is this coming from? I mean, the take is more so that like I feel like there's a pattern of when teams teams like stay together and they actually try to work through their problems. And don't just like rely on like instant results that they do get better over time and they consistently can perform at a higher level um and not to just like make um super rapid like adjustments like so so you do have me here because i do like roster consistency i will say that like when you have a roster of these five players and so many celebrated players so many hype rookies and you can't even make playoffs like i I don't – it's not even like they were in a tiebreaker and they lost, you know. And so I think that this is one of the situations where I think it's important to probably change at least one member, at least so that you can reinv reinvigorate the team or try some sort of like, I don't know, six-man roster situation where you've got a player coming up from Academy and you're seeing if that works. Like I, you, I just don't think you can run it back after a split like this and expect – Great results. Maybe maybe it's a coaching thing. They need to make a coach change, so maybe that's a world where they could keep the five. Um, mm -hmm. But I I just really struggle to see a world where they don't make changes and they 
they don't not just like fail to imp- like you want them not just to improve, but you want them to win summer in a world where we have like Cloud Nine, a resurgent Hunter T, who you seem to be super fan of, FlyQuest, who might be just having a bit of a slump and then they could recover. Like, I, I, I don't see what you see, my friend. Um, I don't know, Kelly Mark, uh, anything from you guys? A couple things. One, I st- I didn't check close enough. Uh, CLG actually finished fifth from playoffs, but they finished uh, fourth in the regular season. But they were uh, eleven and seven. They're ten and eight now. They actually got worse. They finished fourth oh, both wow. splits, but they won one less game this time around. So clearly, point invalidated. It's definitely not like True. this. This season was harder at all. And they might not have, you know, they definitely didn't improve to keep pace with the improvement of the rest of the region. Um, no, but the, the serious answer is like, for me, I think the rookies uh, struggled at different points in the season. I would never deny that. But I also think that is somewhat expected as rookies. And the thing that is more concerning is that the veterans that you brought in to prop them up also struggled heavily and at points struggled harder than your rookies did. And uh, that's a problem with the how the team's supposed to function where like, yeah, you have these young guys that you're investing in and hope are going to get better, and you hopefully have these other stable pieces around them, but your stable pieces were not stable. And to Travis's point, I, I think those are the moves that you make if you want to like keep this philosophy going. I also think it heavily depends on what is available to be gotten uh, because I'm not sure it's immediately clear that there's like certain upgrades you can make. I mean, everyone talks about Whippo Angle. That's one, potentially. Uh, I know this team does speak all Korean, but also... Uh, currently three out of the five and speak english just fine and if you brought in whippo it would be four out of five and uh, then you just have to figure out how to integrate and import and it's not like we haven't done that before in in north america so like it's not like it's that hard to pivot this team's identity despite how much we're sold on the tlck thing um but yeah i have like a really insane split though like you see the one you would replace out of the like five i think he had a really insane split like yeah actually insane like lost his mind and tp in the middle of five people and killed himself for sanity <laughs> yeah um yeah, a little bit inting there sometimes yeah that's that's the kind of insane i'm seeing <laughs> uh kelby you were once a gm what would you do if you were team liquid gm right now yeah how much success did clg have while kelby was the gm though yeah let's 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 be honest the competitive results were were not there for me um yeah, were you you were better than eighth no Sometimes, uh, <laughs> but you, they were better than eighth in a during a time where there were only eight teams. I think that like if you're if you're Team Liquid, the the problem is is that like you've invested so much into this concept, right? I don't think it's probably easy to take out and plug different pieces into a roster like this, right? Especially because the team is speaking full Korean um, when they play. So you probably just need to ride this out for. The rest of the year. Also, I think haven't the scrim reports on them at, at various times been pretty strong? Yeah, people said they were good in scrims, and their early games in the LCS were very good. You yes. can see the potential this team had yes. when things go well. Yeah, so I think I think you need to. I think you probably need to stick it out. Like if it was a different team, like I think you can probably make changes easier. But I think for Team Liquid, they they probably need to ride it out. Dude, this is the classic CLG. The CLG potential. Dude, I forgot how old that... Like, it's been the faith age for so oh, long. No. People forget the potential age. Kelby just said that this team has potential. He never left. GM I didn't Kelby say that they left. have potential. i just saying, like... You what... said it in different words, but what you were mm. saying was that this team has potential. No. I, 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 I don't think this team is... Uh, I, for the reasons that you guys have already stated, I'm not, I'm not incredibly bullish on this roster. It's, um... It's unfortunate because uh, I think Travis, you do you do those uh, roster videos about cost per win and stuff like yeah. that. We're gonna be it's gonna be interesting when the Team Liquid uh, part of that video comes out for sure. So I mean, they're probably gonna be at the bottom. Yeah, and and they've been there before, but with much better results. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, thanks so much, Brenzai, for the call. Anything you want to shout out? Uh, shout out Alienware. Shout out all you guys. And uh, yeah, it was a great show tonight. Yeah, thank you so much. We'll catch the next one. All right. Uh, so no one, please leave because I need you all to stick around for eight minutes after 
the show for a bounty. And I'm going to stick around on chat for a while afterwards too. But if you stick around, it's actually very helpful for me. Um, but we're going to do a bounty and then I'll hang out, open some magic packs on stream and just chill with everybody. But for Mark and Kelby, Mark, what do you got for us this week? Are you please do a blame game? It's been so long. I'm doing a blame game where we're going to review my power rankings and blame myself uh, for where I was drunk or where I was right. Um, I'm going to be holding some L's this split, that's for certain. Otherwise, just looking for playoffs. They start on Thursday. It goes Thursday through Sunday this week. Heyo, shocker, LCS on the weekends again. Uh, time to get some data. Uh, you guys want some data about the weekend performance? Here we go. Uh, also, um, I think I'm casting one of those series, so... Poggers. Sick. Calby, what do you got for us? Uh, thanks for having me on. It's It, it was fun. Um, it's been good to go to LCS again. Uh, you guys can lock it in here and now. The 100 Thieves LCS team is scaling. They are going to are you, win are you Summer on the Split. Rocket? They are going to win Summer Split. That is a lock. You can... Whatever, so you bought whatever. your tickets for North Carolina already then, Kelly, right? Your flights and hotel? Uh, I haven't booked the travel yet, but I will be going, uh, assuming that they make it. But summer Assuming? Split is... You just said that they're winning. No, no, no. They're winning summer. They're oh, winning okay. summer. It's a lock. This, this he's, team he's is He's going to Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that announced? Yes. It's okay. been announced for like two years or something like that crazy. Thing, oh, actually, okay. Well, great. Uh, it's a lock and... You guys can. I, I expect this to be clipped, and for me to get the credit when when it comes to fruition. Very and good. I'll come back and do my victory lap then. All right, that's the show, everybody. Thanks, Kelby, for being on. Uh, hopefully, getting a surprise test out this week. I'm sorry that it's taken a bit to get those going. Uh, stick around, everybody, and uh, we'll catch you all next time. Bye. <laughs>